Hey everyone, Pal World just came out last week and it seems like it's already taken over the world. If you're into gaming at all, it seems impossible to have missed a game that has sold over 8 million copies on Steam alone. It would be equally hard to ignore the controversy surrounding the game, with people accusing the game of using AI and plagiarizing or stealing from Nintendo. I wanted to cover that, but first I want to talk about the game itself, where it came from, and if it's any good or just another flavor of the week. I'm going to be focusing on the single player experience, but it should be noted that Pal World has multiplayer as an option as well. With that intro out of the way, let's dive into the world of PALs. So where did PAL World come from? If you haven't been following the development of the game, it might seem like it came out of nowhere. It was announced in 2021 to some buzz, but it seems people had forgotten about it until its release brought it back to the forefront of everyone's mind. Maybe people forgot about it until now, in part because PAL World's developer, Pocket Pair, has kept a relatively low profile compared to the overnight success of their recent game. They were founded in the spring of 2015 and since 2019 have released a few much lower profile games spanning different genres and varying levels of feedback from fans. On top of that, it seems that they are currently still working on their most recent release besides Pal World, an open world survival game called Craftopia that shares a lot of similarities with Pal World. It makes you wonder how they are able to juggle so much even with the news that they have expanded their team to include 40 more developers. With all that success, you know those new devs are going to be busy for the foreseeable future. As for their founder, Takuro Mizobi, it seems he has a modest resume when it comes to game development. Besides the games released by his company, he listed himself as attending a DS development seminar hosted by Nintendo before graduating from the Tokyo Institute of Technology. From there, he founded a cryptocurrency exchange before going on to work in game development. Not the most extensive background, but that doesn't mean they can't make a good game. And with that being all I could find about them, I'm going to move my focus back to Power World, specifically my experience with the gameplay. Pal World plays like a lot of games you're probably intimately familiar with, and even if you aren't, you've definitely heard the names. Breath of the Wild, Ark, and any other survival slash base building games you can think of. But out of all of those, Breath of the Wild draws the most immediate point of reference when I first loaded up the game. The looks are very similar, to say the least. As you get deeper into it, Ark and other survival games take over in terms of mechanics. When you load up the game, you are immediately greeted to a large open world dotted with small islands. You meet a man who gives you a brief overview of the world, and from there you are left to your own devices, being led only by in-game goals that expand what you can do and build in the game as you progress. And you will be building a lot in this game. It wasn't something I was expecting from the promotional material and tweets I'd read, but base building is indeed a large part of what you will be spending your time doing. As you go around, capturing pals is mostly in service to strengthen your base, at least in the early game. As you build more structures and facilities in the area, you can then use your pals to help automate resource gathering as well as defend from random raids consisting of armed men appearing out of nowhere intent on shooting up your new home. If you have set traps and level up your pals, you shouldn't really have much of a problem against them though. And I guess that brings me to the pals. When it comes to their design, they're cute, but that's really all the positive stuff I have to say about them. From my short experience with them, they were frustrating to interact with and control. It would be nice if the game implemented more direct controls with them when you're in the field. As it is right now, all you really do is direct them towards an enemy and feed them if they are low on health. They'll level up alongside you, and even more so if you're using one specific pal a lot. Maybe more in-depth controls get unlocked later, but I did not have the patience to find out, especially already being 5 hours into the game. As for using your pals on the base, it was a fine experience. They have buffs or weaknesses unique to each pal, but I didn't really notice much of a difference with any of them, so it seemed like a waste to think about that aspect at all. Because of that, I hope they either get rid of that aspect or expand upon it, because as it stands, it seems like a useless addition to a game that can already seem a little overwhelming with its UIs and systems all over the screen. Besides the base building and capturing pals, the last thing I experienced is the boss fights. Pretty straightforward, you're going to want to grind a bit before you do these. I did not want to grind, so my first boss fight was unfortunately my last. You will find them located at towers in the game world. Once you feel that you are ready, you can enter those towers, and you'll be transported to an arena where you will go up against that boss and their powerful pal. In a heated one-on-one -on -one battle, what you win I can't say for sure, but if I had to guess, it's probably resources of some kind. This game, like many others in its genre, is loaded with many different resources to manage. And those are really all the basics of the game as far as I can see or that I really feel like I need to tell you about. Nothing special, and it could be improved in a lot of ways, but at least I know what people are talking about now whenever they mention this game. I might even jump back into it from time to time, but I can't really see this taking over my life in any meaningful way. As for the story of Pal World, there isn't really much to say either. For the most part, you are thrust into this world and tasked with catching the pals, building your base, and defeating the bosses located at certain towers along your adventure. There's very little else in story in that formula, but Pal World does manage to throw some environmental storytelling into the mix, however sparse it might be. This takes the form of journal entries found throughout the world that tell the story of people who have come to this world before you and are experiencing much the same as you, the player. 
These journal entries are easy to miss or ignore without really affecting your experience, and depending on your preference, you might see that as a positive, but I tend to disagree. If you're going to go to the effort to put journal entries into the game, I feel like you should go all in and make them feel integral, make them feel interesting. The least you could do is attach them to some gameplay mechanic or hint at future updates to the game. I don't know, it just feels like such a half measure to me. Why even have them at all if you aren't going to make them interesting? Granted, the game is still in early access, so there is hope that more story elements will be added in the future. At least you would think so with how many copies and how much money this has given Pocket Pair to work with. I guess all we can really do is wait and see. One thing we won't have to wait for, however, is controversy. We've seen a ton of that already, so I'll try to briefly go over that for anyone who's interested. Ever since the game released last week, there have been a ton of different accusations thrown towards PAL World, and as far as I can tell, they all have varying degrees of legitimacy, so I figured it would be worth it to quickly go over the big two that I keep seeing. AI and plagiarism. When it comes to plagiarism, it can be tough to decide sometimes if a game is simply inspired by something else or if it's just ripping it off. As far as PAL World is concerned, I think it would be an understatement to say that it has been at least inspired by other games such as Breath of the Wild. But where PAL World might cross that line into ripoff territory is with the PALs. In fact, most of these accusations and controversies are connected to the PALs in one way or another. It first started when the game was originally announced that people started to notice that the PALs looked eerily similar to certain Pokemon designs, sometimes even looking like little more than a color swap. Once the game actually came out, some people on Twitter put together some side-by-sides comparisons of the designs as well as some interesting similarities of the actual models themselves. Now to me, these look like they're a lot more than just inspired by the designs of Pokemon, but it's not up to me. Ultimately, it will be up to Nintendo and the Pokemon company and the individual artists, I suppose as well, that work within those companies to decide if this is just a coincidence or if Pocket Pair might have maybe took too much inspiration. And Nintendo has actually released a statement on this whole situation. If this will actually go anywhere though, we'll just have to wait and see. As for the other controversy surrounding the game, I think it's a lot harder to pin down. From what I have seen, some people have accused the game of using AI in some ways, and I'm completely against AI, but as of right now it doesn't really seem like there's any substantial proof of that besides the gut feeling of random people and the fact that the CEO has shown interest in AI in the past when it comes to one of his former games as well as the application of the tool in other industries. However, I do think it's important to note that just because they have used AI in the past for a game focused on the concept doesn't mean they have when it comes to this game. I also think that's important to note that not all AI tools are the same. Some have real world applications that don't steal from artists and sometimes it seems that that is forgotten and said AI is used as a catch all for anything that is bad. But I digress, a lot of this drama surrounding the game seems to have only bolstered the sales anyway. Did they steal the designs from Nintendo? I think it's very likely, but we'll have to wait for Nintendo and um, Game Freak to take action. Did they use AI to steal those designs or make their game? That's a lot harder to pin down, if you even care about that in the first place. I'm sure we'll hear more about it in the future, but at this point I'm fine with detaching myself from that part of the conversation and moving on to the more engaging, better games anyway. So there you have it everyone. That's been my experience with Power World, as well as what I've seen of the wider controversy surrounding the game. With all that said, do I think you should play the game? Honestly, no. I don't think I would recommend it to anybody in the state it's currently in. It's a decent base building survival game that combines a lot of elements of other popular games. The problem is that it's just decent, and besides the initial Pokemon-like experience, it doesn't really do anything to stand out in my eyes, nor does it really hold my interest for more than a few hours even with all its novelty. And that's before you even factor the accusations of plagiarism and the, and the possible, though not proven, use of AI, but honestly, that's just an added thing to think about on top of a just okay game. All I can really say is that I hope it gets better as Pocket Pair continues to work on their game and grow their community, but going forward, there's a ton of other games in this genre you could recommend instead. But enough about what I think. What do you guys think of the game so far? Have you played it, and if so, are you enjoying it, or was it more of a one and done situation? Let's keep the conversation going down in the comments. Thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a like or subscribing. It would mean the world to me. I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.